you believe you can be pure? Well, where you look, you will go, and where you go, you'll become. So don't say, hey, I'm just not pure. I'm struggling with all this stuff all the time. It's not about you can, but to get there, it means you have to focus your eyes, the eyes of your heart, and it's not only the eyes of your heart. It may very well be your, real, your regular physical eyes as well. But what you look at, that's where you're going to go. So if you're looking at junk, you're going to go there. That's where you're going to become like that. But if you look, you have to, you know, you know, I once did a message called the anti-sin device, the great, and that's your neck. You know, you've got this neck God gave you. And the neck has this amazing ability to turn. And that can be bad or that can be good. I mean, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're stiff-necked and you can't do anything. And God spoke about that. I mean, spiritually. But the point is, you have a neck so, which turns the rest of your thing. You've got a choice. You don't have to look at that thing or that person or that object. You don't have to do that. Turn. And if you have a hard time with your, your mind, start with your neck. And say, okay, I'm not going to look at that. Here's a book. Here's this on the internet. I'm not looking there. I'm turning it off. I'm turning it to something else. You know, you have a choice. It starts like that, and then you're going to be able to even turn your thoughts away. And the eyes of your heart away from those things that are wasting your time. Your eyes, treat them as holy. Let nothing in that's not pure. What you look at, you'll become. The eye is the window of the soul. Treat your mind as a holy vessel. Turn it. Replace it with a pure. Train your mind, your heart. And it will be trained. It just takes time, but you have to do it. Make a choice. Make a little step and then keep doing a bigger step. But where you look, you're going. What else do we know is God's will for your life? That you become a more loving person. No matter how loving you are, become more like Messiah. So how do you become more loving? Well, you look at what you become. So you have to make a decision that I'm not going to be dwelling my mind on what is not loving, what is hateful, or what pe what's going to make me get all angry at those people. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm going to turn away from those things that are negative. I'm going to turn away from the things that people did to me. I can't look there. Because if you look there, you're going, to be, you're going to go there and you're going to become that. I mean, if you're thinking about this, if you're dwelling all the time on what people did to you, where are you going? You're not going forward. You're going backwards. You know, if you think about the, you know, what the faults of other people, is that going to make you more loving? You look in the direction of love. It's bad, to be, it's bad enough that you were hurt once. Why hurt yourself twice and three times by replaying it again and again? Why imprison yourself in a prison of bitterness? I knew a minister once who, who uh, destroyed his entire ministry because he believed that these people had sinned against him in ministry and he held on to it until it destroyed his ministry, destroyed his health. He was almost dead. If you were to become loving, you got to look in the direction of love. You got to look in the direction of love. Look at what is good, uh, starting with God. Then on everything else, look at love. Look at the things which make for love. His love for you. And, and whatever is good. And what does the Bible say? Whatever is good and pure and beautiful. All the, let your mind dwell on these things. Because you're going to become like what you dwell on. If you dwell on what's against you, you're going to become like that. If you dwell on all your problems, like you, you know, it could be the same two people in a room, they have the same life, but one dwells on all the bad, they're going to become a wreck. They're going to become like the thing they're dwelling on. But the one who dwells on God like Paul in a prison is going to become like God, is going to become above their situation. They're going to become more and more like Jesus.